Hello and welcome to Culture Vultures. I'm Sandy Fry, your host. Our creative director is Nancy Cole, and this is a program that examines arts and culture around Tampa Bay. And I'm delighted to say that uh, I'm going to be welcoming the new executive director of Tampa Hillsboro Film and Digital Media Commission. Dale Gordon, welcome. Thank you so much. And I would say welcome to Tampa, but you know a little bit of Tampa. I do, oh, I yes. do. I actually was here in the 90s. I graduated uh -huh. from USF, go Bulls. Yes. <laughs> um, and then um, I've actually been here for a couple of years now, uh, uh -huh. working uh, privately with my family's construction company. So not in the uh -huh. film industry, but have had have been here for a little bit. So uh -huh. I'm a little, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar of the Hillsborough area. Right. Well, this is the first time I think Tampa and Hillsborough County have joined forces. And, uh, and I can see why they did, because mm -hmm. you come with an awful lot of very good experience with your work in Orlando. Yes. Tell, you know, me, tell me about that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, previously I was with the Metro Orlando Economic Development Commission and their film commission. Mm -hmm. uh, what was unique about Metro Orlando is that they ha they were a four-county regional office, and then we represented so the four counties and then about 25 different jurisdictions within those counties. So mm -hmm. it was a tremendous footprint, but at the end of the day, it just really streamlined the process for us to be able to service the filmmaker, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, they don't look at city level lines or county lines sure. they just say I want to go film in X city and then you know it's it's great if you can take care of that no matter where they are in the area right so. um, do you interface with any uh, Universal or or Disney in any particular way yeah. uh, or do they all also offer facilities for filmmakers you know definitely it's a team you know combined mm -hmm. effort um, they were some of the you know back in the 90s was when Orlando was dubbed Hollywood East mm -hmm. and the reason yeah. for that was when the studios opened both the Disney MGM and the Universal Studios right. so having that as a kind of in your toolbox of you know things to lure filmmaking was was so helpful and so it definitely was a combined effort using those resources to market that area as a filming destination Mm -hmm. Not everybody gets to say that you have a back lot and sound stages in your backyard. That's right. So. That, that's really a, a, a very, very valuable tool mm -hmm. to uh, offer people. And um, for those who may not know what it takes for states to um, invite production companies to film and produce in their state, uh, I'm going to ask you to give a kind of a a survey of what states have done mm -hmm. to have productions in their state. Great. Well, you know, there's a lot of things you can do to make yourself attractive to the filming industry. Obviously, mm -hmm. locations, uh, yeah. you know, and, and locations for, for so very long have always been um, a very, very big asset. Uh, to be able to have versatility in your locations. For mm -hmm. example, a lot of times Central Florida, for you know, we are shot as what's called Anywhere America. And especially because we are a large commercial production destination, so when you know, it's, it's winter and the advertising agencies are gearing up to shoot their spring and summer campaigns, they need something that looks like somewhere that looks like spring and summer. Mm -hmm. Well, we're one of the only places in the country that you can shoot 365 days of the year green. So again, in you know, January where it's snowing and maybe dreary in other places, it still looks like summer in Florida. So that's, that's always right. been a huge strength for us. Mm -hmm. But now, of course, the, the main tool right now is the incentives. Uh -huh. um, and so that's something, um, just to give a little overview on those who may not be familiar with it, uh, the feature film industry, meaning the large large impact projects, so uh, the big movies, the ones that you'll see, you know, the $50 million budgets, and also the television series. Those mm -hmm. are what we call high impact productions, meaning they have a, a large economic impact footprint. Sure. Those have been incentivized, those kinds of projects in, in that aspect of the industry. So what's happened is, you know, originally it was Canada. They started this and they wanted to lure, uh, lure industry to Canada, probably about 15, almost 
about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so they identified the film industry because of their high economic impact, because they, it's not an industry that pollutes. Um, you also get a sense of tourism whenever something films in your area. Right. And so they created this incentive structure that was about a 20% return. So they basically set this up and said, okay, Mr. Filmmaker, you bring your $100 million film here to Canada and shoot it. We're going to turn around and cut you a check for $20 million. So we're going to give you 20% of your budget. And it actually caught on like wildfire and created a phenomenon called runaway production where everything started leaving Hollywood and right. going to Canada. Right. Um, so about 10 years ago, the individual states started doing this. Right. And so now you had places that did not have infrastructure also. They didn't have studios. They didn't have stages or skilled workforce or equipment companies. But at the end of the day, they could write a check, and that over, you know, that overcame the cost of what it would do, take to bring those services in. Right. So now we had places like Louisiana, New Mexico, Georgia is the one right now that is on fire, mm -hmm. uh, offering anywhere from 20 to 40 percent in some instances. Wow. Well, yeah. I just heard an NPR radio story, and, and, it's, and it was centered around South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently they've had a series of, e they're either zombies or the living dead or the walking dead or, <laughs> or the flying dead. <laughs> um, or maybe it was, the, uh, it was Abraham Lincoln, yeah. the vampire killer or yes, something yeah. like that. Uh, where they did that, mm -hmm. but they also took uh, a survey of what they gained, what mm -hmm. the state gained economically. Yeah. And they found it was almost a wash. The return on investment is yeah. key. Um, you know, a, lo a lot of states are starting to get into that. I know uh, when Louisiana actually created their program, they were giving away so much money mm -hmm. that the FBI actually come in and came in and investigated them for giving away so much money. They're laundering uh, it? Yeah. I don't know. I, mean, I'm, I think it all worked out in the end, right. but still, um, you know, Florida, luckily, we are viewed as having the most accountable incentive right. program in the country. Uh, uh, the way that our incentive program works is it's a tax credit. So you actually have to come here, film, spend the money, mm -hmm. and then submit your books to the state to basically undergo an audit to make sure that all of those funds were qualifying expenditures mm -hmm. that were spent in the state of Florida. And so, and then only then will they then receive their tax credit. That's very smart. Yes. Is that recent or did that happen a long time ago? Nope, that's been part of, well, the rebate, it used to be a rebate, so there, we did used to write a check back, but it was moved over to tax credit probably about five years ago. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's very so, smart. Thing yes, to it do. is. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things I, I remember from my association with uh, Florida Television Motion Pictures Association is that, um, what they had hoped for professionals to come in mm -hmm. would be to create professionals on, on the site, mm -hmm. uh, working with them. Uh, one of the things that, for example, may have convinced Connecticut, which has now stopped uh, making its uh, mm -hmm. incentive to uh, producers, is that um, all the big money, mm -hmm. all the big salaries, in yeah. fact, came with the producers yes. and everybody else is pretty much below the line mm -hmm. and and it's not really a, a huge uh, thing we're talking yes. about. And that's how our incentive, again, you know, our incentive takes out the top two highest paid salaries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there it, sure. we get away from the criticism because a lot of people would say you're incentivizing a big budget movie star or a big budget uh, television producer who lives in, Louis, you know, who lives in California. So you're, sure. you're, you're basically incentivizing them and they're taking that money back home to California. Right. So this takes that, that factor out of it completely for us. So. Uh, that's very smart move, yes. I think. Well, it, it, it also calls to mind that in the process, you're taking, uh, um, you're taking care to raise mm -hmm. a, a whole crop of producers. Yes. In Tampa recently, I guess it maybe it was last year, perhaps the effort started the year before that, Fort Homer Hesterly Armory, which is vacated now mm -hmm. and has been for some time, was looked on as a possibility of having uh, all of the producing companies here and all the satellite production individuals or small uh, yeah. companies in one under one roof. It might be a lot more uh, convenient mm -hmm. for the people who come in. Yes. I don't know if it's absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. Well, that idea and that um, design, I'm a big supporter of. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, the, one of the, the first week that I got here, for example, I uh, worked with a production, it was a commercial production, and I found out that they were actually prepping their job in Orlando oh. to film here in Tampa. And when I found that out, it made me a little crazy. And so, I, you know, yeah. the idea, but the reason that they did that was because of Universal Studios and their exactly that scenario. Not only do they have the sound stage, but they mm -hmm. have the office complex. Sure. And it's such a great model because not only does it uh, give a place for those outside productions that are coming in to kind of headquarter, but it also gives a place for our local production services companies to have maybe, even if it's just a, a satellite office, mm -hmm. um, that they can set up shop. And so you're creating this synergy amongst the industry. And that's one of the things that we heard loud and clear from the local industry that they they needed was something to bring us all together because everybody in the absence of leadership or a film commissioner has really just been off doing their own thing and operating in their own silos, really just trying to exist sure. in the industry. And when you're doing that and you're not uh, collaborating and you're not figure you're not hearing about what is going on until after it's done, uh, it's just it's not it's not constructive. Sure. And so you know I'm a, I'm a very big supporter of that concept. Mm -hmm. It's definitely something that I think we'll look at down the road. I know that the Armory uh, location has come and gone. That's been, it has been purchased and they're developing that out. Right. Um, but it's definitely something on the radar and something I think our community would, would, would benefit from. Right. Yeah. And also, um, when you came, uh, did you have a number of aims that uh, you promised to yourself mm -hmm. after seeing what was available? Sure. I, I know that um, or at least I think I know that uh, um, talent mm -hmm. uh, goes to where it's yes. wanted. Absolutely. And uh, I've noticed over the last uh, five to eight years that acting talent, for mm -hmm. example, is getting very strong in all the acting companies. There used to be far fewer mm -hmm. uh, than there are yeah. right now, uh, but there, there, uh, there are more skilled actors mm -hmm. and good to good uh, dramatic choices that are being made here mm -hmm. so you can almost sense the growing um, th the growing quality mm -hmm. and it's and it's a very exciting thing yeah. the fact Absolutely. that uh, one of the theater uh, troops um, now has a home of its own mm -hmm. in channel side yeah. is one indication that people coming in of course it was the the builder of channel side said uh, I think this would be a wonderful place yeah. for you to be. Yeah. And uh, I hope more people who are going to be building, uh, yeah. you know, in the future, think about having creative people here to make it more exciting, more dramatic. Absolutely, Sandy. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, we are really lucky in Florida because we do have a large talent pool when it comes to talent. Right. Um, and I think that that's because Florida is quickly becoming a creative community. We really are um, mm -hmm. able to use that as a strength when we are marketing the area. Mm -hmm. uh, I hear over and over uh, many times uh, whenever production comes in and they use our local talent, mm -hmm. then they walk away from the experience and they go, oh my goodness, yeah. I didn't realize that you had all of this great talent here. And so it's you know we and That's I hear that great. every time, right. every single time somebody right. comes in and I'm like, well, yep, yeah. you know, Dolphin Tail, they re, you know they yes. they shot their film That's and right. they used a lot of local talent mm -hmm. and they're actually gearing up for their second. Uh, film that's going to be produced here in the Tampa Bay area, and I know they're going to be utilizing a lot of our local talent as well. Right. I know that there's Full Sail. Yes. And uh, Full Sail, it, which is in Orlando, mm -hmm. I think, or close to it, yes. um, is a, a really uh, an outstanding uh, preparation for anyone who wants to be involved. It is. And I actually, and you know, you, you worked there. I did. Well, yeah. I was a, I was a guest lecturer for right. many years. Yeah. Um, I would come in and speak to them to the industry about the film commission, how they could work with the film commission, mm -hmm. uh, really educate them on location scouting, permitting, uh, media, networking, kind mm -hmm. of, you know, you know, getting in there and, and trying to give them the other aspect that wasn't technical, the business side of the industry, which right. they also get there too. But, you know, that program, oh my goodness, what an amazing program. And to be able to see it, you know, I actually was born and raised in Orlando. So uh. I was, I remember back when it was just a recording, music recording school. And to mm -hmm. see it grow from what it was to what it has become now is just remarkable. Is that right? It what, is. What more does it offer? Well, they, they have, you know, 
first they were in the music recording, then they got into the traditional film production. Mm -hmm. Now since then they have moved on to the digital animation, the gaming aspect of it, motion capture I think they're doing some of. So um, really just broadened their horizons and they have evolved as the industry has evolved uh -huh. from film into digital media. Oh, so it's just a phenomenal program. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of digital media, mm -hmm. it has made everyone uh, capable of being yes. a director and mm -hmm. a producer. Um, has that impacted in any significant way the industry as a whole that you may know of from your readings? Of Tremendously. Things? You know, yeah. what it's done is it's, it's actually, because there are new formats of distribution, mm -hmm. uh, so there's YouTube, there's Google+, there's Netflix even, and all of these are digital formatted uh, distribution avenues. It's really taken, you know, the two hardest things in the film production world are financing and distribution. Right. And so this has offered a new avenue for distribution. On the financing side of the world, we're now having new efforts uh, with crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. And so those two uh, aspects of the industry, having these newfound digital and evolved uh, technologies coming into play, or have completely changed the state of the film industry. The, yeah. There's not as much power in those studio productions because independent filmmakers can be homegrown now. You can exactly. anybody can get your product out there, and if enough people see it, you, you have a success, and you can open up doors. Right, and I think there are more festivals now. Absolutely. Um, uh, last year, I went to uh, North Carolina for I think it was called Fast. Fast film, and it was in, in, it was all um, uh, not uh, creative and dramatic, mm -hmm. but a documentary. Mm -hmm. And there must have been uh, roughly seventy-five films shown yeah. over about a period of four days. Mm -hmm. And then, and after each showing, um, the audience uh, was given a, a, a sort of a rating mm -hmm. thing, and. Uh, and then they announced the best film mm -hmm. in their uh, in their opinion in the audience yeah. opinions. The, and there there were two, and they are couldn't have been more unequal. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one was called The American Promise, about two boys from Harlem who were accepted into a very elite private mm -hmm. uh, academy in New York, mm -hmm. and how they progressed as they grew up. And the second one was. Uh, it was called bush talkie, mm -hmm. which means um, it it really means that uh, that there is a dead goat <laughs> oh. in the middle of this uh, one of the stand countries, Afghanistan, Pakistan, all the stands. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a national sport. A, a goat is uh, unfortunately killed and dropped in the middle of a big plain. Mm -hmm. There are sort of hills around, and about twenty men on horseback have to grab at the goat, oh. but the one who does get it has to take it to a certain place. Mm -hmm. Now the others try to hit him <laughs> and okay. take the goat away <sighs> and so forth. And I, I had never seen anything so sort of breathtaking yeah. in my life. And imagine. then after I got home I went back on the web and looked for it and I found uh, Omar Sharif, uh, he actually wa was in one a long time ago, mm -hmm. but during the, uh, apparently the Russian um, uh, uh, rule over the, all the stand countries, they did not want anything quite so uh, nerve-wracking yeah. as a national sport, but it was a fascinating thing. So, wow. So Educational. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. The, the, uh, the thing I see is that they, just like magazines and just like um, uh, television and so forth, it's been fractured into people's desires. Yes. If you're particularly interested in cars, there are about yeah. 10 or so, mm. in every kind of way. On, yeah. Uh, you know. Well, yeah, and it's interesting, yeah. you know, the popularity of independent films, and I think that's why, you know, for example, I'm actually going to be attending the New Orleans Film Festival uh, next week, yeah. and we have very successful film festivals here in the Tampa Bay area. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, this week, Friday night's the opening night for the Tampa Bay 
Gay, I'm sorry, the Tampa International Gay and Lesbian Film yes. Festival. Yep. Uh, obviously, we have the Gasparilla International Film Festival, which is extremely successful and mm -hmm. is growing. Uh, just down the road, we have the Florida Film Festival in Orlando, which is one of the top 15 film festivals in the world. Right. Uh, so I think the popularity of these film festivals is really telling in that the audience is driving uh, what they want to see. That's right. You know, it's not necessarily always the big, you know, Iron Man 3. Nothing no. against Iron Man 3. I loved it. But, right. you know, I think right. it's it's interesting to see the change in it's climate of what the audience is, is, sure. is desiring. And, and a lot of these films, too, are sort of uh, giving, digging into concerns like conservation yes. and environmental concerns. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, and giving uh, audiences yet another mm -hmm. view of an issue Absolutely. that was probably treated in one way only. We just heard this week that the Blue Ocean uh, Film Festival is going to be choosing the Tampa Bay area to host their event, and it's a, a it's a film festival and a summit, and so you're going to have the conversion of filmmakers and conservation, and so again, oh, that's fascinating. yeah, very interesting, and so again, yeah. another event and festival that we're just so delighted yeah. about. And, and there's an Indian festival coming. There's an Indian festival. That's very there, well, there's an annual international Indian, or I'm sorry, Indian Film Festival, but we have actually been chosen as the home city for the next uh, International Indian Film Academy Awards, uh -huh. which is basically Bollywood, which is mm -hmm. the, the film industry in India, this mm -hmm. is their Oscars. Right. And every year they hold this event in a very cosmopolitan cities all around the world. Mm -hmm. They've had it in Dubai, London, New Amsterdam, Toronto. Mm -hmm. Last year it was in Macaw. And this year is the first year that they will be hosting it in the United States. And they have chosen Tampa as the host city. So That's we are terrific. thrilled, thrilled about them. That. I've seen, uh, uh, there was an Indian channel, I, I grew up in New Jersey, mm -hmm. and there were many channels in mm -hmm. New Jersey, yeah. <laughs> and one of them was, and I had a chance to see Indian acting, and it's very dramatic. Yes. And it's and very, very effective. And musical, and yeah. colorful, and mm -hmm. lots of dance scenes, and so That's right. we actually, uh, I'll be participating with this uh, event, and they're going to have many events beforehand, including probably production of a few films here mm -hmm. locally uh, to create hype, but they're really, mm -hmm. you know, the organizers of this event are really looking at this to spearhead a new effort of film Indian filmmaking within our community. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons that we got this event was because of the large Indian community, private Indian community that we That's have right. here in the Tampa Bay area, which I learned we have the largest Indian community in the United States. Yes. And so very And exciting. philanthropic, I have yes, to say. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, and they have a gorgeous uh, meeting uh, edifice um, mm -hmm. uh, in the in the county. Yes, and um, I a, a theater company in Tampa mm -hmm. used that for its uh, annual yeah. uh, event. Yes, and it was wonderful. And beautiful it really too. It was mm -hmm. wonderful. So mm -hmm. in many ways, these things are happening sort of here and there. Yeah, and uh, one of your I think, mag imagine you would like to do is bring everyone's attention to what is happening Absolutely. And, and talk about what the finished product could yeah. be like. You know, communication. Communication yeah. at the end of the day is what we need to do. Right. We need to get the word out that all of these exciting things are happening. Right. That we have this amazing Indian event. That we have Dolphin Tale 2 that is mm -hmm. here. Um, one of the other conversations that I'm trying to start is also the emphasis on commercial production because mm, at yes. the end of the day, that's our bread and butter. You know, yep. the the big budget films and television projects have been incentivized and unless we have a strong state incentive program we're not necessarily in competition for those kinds of projects mm -hmm. but where we can be competitive at is at the commercial level and the independent films and so those are two aspects of the industry that I personally intend to focus on mm -hmm. to try to keep that industry uh, going and also try to recruit more of it right. so let me ask you something mm -hmm. in the state or maybe even the general southern area uh, what uh, institutions or universities do you think have fairly uh, interesting mm -hmm. uh, programs? Well, uh, Florida State University and the Ringling uh, School, actually just down the road in Sarasota, mm -hmm. sure. were just voted as the t two 
two of the top 10 film production programs in the United States. Oh, how interesting. So the fact that we have, you know, one 45 minutes down the road, one's a little bit more north, but mm -hmm. um, it's a great indication of the kind of uh, curriculums that are being taught out of the state of Florida. Right. Uh, again, you know, we do have the University of Tampa, we have Hillsbury Community College, they do have programs, but I'm reaching out to them to also try to uh, cultivate their programs a little bit more and maybe, you know, we can raise them to together collectively as a community effort uh, to raise the profile of what they're doing and right. actually try to facilitate what some of these other successful programs are doing as well. Right. So. Well, you know, and by the way, there is Tampa Bay Community Network, and Tampa Bay Community Network trains mm -hmm. people who want to get into this business, and whether you have experience at all doesn't make a bit of difference. They teach at all levels, and they're very cost-effective. I have to say that. Absolutely, yeah. and I know some of our local producers have come out of this studio That's as true. well and have gone on to very successful careers. Right. Do you think that um, commercial films uh, uh, right now are directed at any one uh, city mm -hmm. in the state? Um, I know that uh, Miami probably has the most flourishing mm -hmm. Spanish mm -hmm. film and, um, and music programs mm -hmm. and television mm -hmm. and so forth. They do. You know, yeah. Miami is Miami. Um, you know, it's interesting because I think we talked a little bit ago about how uh, you can, you know, when you film in Central Florida, you, so a lot of times you're filming for anywhere America, meaning mm -hmm. you want it to be generic. Right. If you're filming in Miami, you're filming Miami yes, pretty much. That's right. So, um, but the other thing that they do have is they do have the Spanish television. They have the Telemundo mm -hmm. network, which is located in Miami. Um, they do have a lot of music videos. They have uh, had some te television episodic work. Right. Um, so yeah, very uh, destination filming, we'll call it, right. where as Central Florida, Tampa and Orlando specifically, uh, we're, we're more generic. We're more, mm -hmm. you know, you can play us as uh, Nebraska or Ohio right. or wherever it may need to be to film a State Farm commercial mm -hmm. or a Nike commercial, um, you know, and again, there's 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 something to be said about being versatile in your locations and I think okay. Tampa in general we're so lucky because we have so many different looks that's right we've got everything from historic buildings of Ebor we've got our agriculture lands out in uh, the eastern part of the county mm -hmm. in Plant City right. which is a huge draw for commercial filmmaking um, we have the downtown skyline we have a port not every right. city has a port, <laughs> know, you know, and then right. just across the bridges, we have some of the most beautiful beaches that they yes. that there are out there. So right. we've got we, a lot. We have a lot to offer yes. the filmmakers location wise. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, I like to make a joke sometimes and say, you know, at the I sell sunshine. Right. But really, that's what that's I'm what doing. You, do. you know, I have an easy job where I get to sell, you know, these beautiful blue skies and green grass yeah. and, and people want to work here. You, you know, bet. it's great. Well, with your enthusiasm and your background. I think it's going to be a wonderful story that you're going to tell. Thank you. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's very good. And thank you. Come again. Change your life. Learn TV and internet video production skills at TVCN in Tampa. Become a skilled video producer quickly and inexpensively. Learn audio, editing, lighting, and camera basics. Produce multi-camera videos for TV, the internet, business, or pleasure. Welcome to my live call-in show on Tampa Bay Community Network. 
You too can learn to produce and star in your own video programming. Or you can have TBCN staff do it for you. Call TBCN at 813-977-5200 today and change your life. Visit our website at tbcn.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn.